Feud is the story of famous American writer Truman Capote and the infamous Swans, a group of New York City socialites who would become the centerpiece for his scandalous 1965 piece La Côte Basque, exposing their lives in a web of scandal, gossip, and intrigue. But at its core, Feud is a story of friendship, betrayal, and forgiveness which paints Capote as its tragic figure. In the 1950s and 60s, Capote climbed the ranks of New York high society with a combination of charm charisma, and successful literary works such as In Cold Blood and Breakfast at Tiffany's. He cultivated friendships with celebrities and influential people, quickly becoming the must-have guest at any social event. Among his social circle were the aptly named The Swans, a group of socialites he befriended and would later betray. The show focuses on four of these swans. There's Babe Paley, a fashion editor for Vogue and wife of CBS founder Bill Paley, Lee Radswell, sister of Jackie Kennedy, Kennedy, CZ Guest, who was painted by such renowned artists like Diego Rivera and Salvador Dali, and Slim Keith, married to British aristocrat and baron Kenneth Keith. The relationship between Capote and his swans was mutually beneficial. As an openly gay man, Truman was one of a few men these women could rely on. Most of the swans' husbands were out having affairs, and when shit hit the fan, Truman was there to console them. We were sort of Pomeranians to them, aren't we? <laughs> there to cuddle when they need something fluffy to hold on to. Babe remarks on the reliability of gay men, stating, What's more, homosexual won't drop you after you reach a certain age. If anything, they lift you higher. In other words, there's a certain amount of safety that comes with befriending a gay man. Capote calls these women his swans because, although they may be beautiful, they will sometimes drown under the weight of their own beauty. You know, some swans actually drown under the beauty and weight of their fantastical superficial plumage. He calls Babe a swan because, as a child, she was more of an ugly duckling, having her face reconstructed into something beautiful after a tragic car accident. Along with the perks of mingling with society's highest echelon, Capote had an ulterior motive in befriending these women, one which might even be subconscious to him. As a child growing up with a single mother, Capote was often neglected and abandoned. Eventually, his mother would go on to commit suicide. Perhaps by befriending these women, Capote looked to fill that hole his mother left, that need to be loved and wanted by a female in power. It's kind of ironic since Capote will later go on to remark that all these women are terrible mothers. There's also this underlying motivation for Capote to prove to his mother that he has what it takes to live amongst the socialites. His mother had tried to join high society but was rejected, likely because she was a single mother from a poor town in Alabama. My mother was kicked out of parties like these. And that's why she killed herself. In the 1960s and 70s, Capote would continue to develop his friendships with the Swans, often attending lunches at La Côte Basque, a French restaurant frequented by the Manhattan elite. He became their closest confidant, learning their deepest, darkest secrets. This culminated in 1975 with the release of two chapters in a novel to be titled Answered Prayers. For the purposes of this video, we'll be focusing on the chapter La Côte Basque, a 13,000 word piece that exposed the secrets of his inner circle of friends. These scandalous revelations included details of backstabbing, betrayal, and illicit affairs. Although Capote made some efforts to disguise the names, it wasn't long before everyone knew who he was talking about. The publication resulted in Capote losing the trust of his friends and backlash for betraying their confidence. In fact, Truman would lose the friendship of his number one friend, Babe Paley. The only person who could ever really hurt me is you. And that would never happen in a million years. But why would Capote ruin all these friendships for a piece in a magazine? Although there is no definitive explanation for this, the show posits a few answers. One is that Capote was subconsciously doing this to avenge his mother for being rejected by the community. You did it. And you did it all for me. You avenged me, of course. Another is that it's just in Capote's nature as a writer to expose the truth. In episode 5, James Baldwin encourages Capote to finish his novel because he was given a gift of showing the world how it really is. The real answer is likely much more multifaceted. A bit of jealousy, personal gain, and the belief he would be forgiven may have all played a role in this decision. Alas, forgiveness would not come for Capote, as he spends the rest of his life attempting to win back the favor of his swans to no avail. He spirals in and out of alcohol 
alcoholism and destroys all of his relationships. In the season's final episode, as Capote lay dying, he dreams of making it up to his friends by helping them with various aspects of their lives, just as he did when they were friends. He takes CZ on an adventure to reignite her wild side, he helps Slim to get over her anger, and Lee to devise ways to kill her husband. But as Anne Woodward, one of Capote's honorary swans, says, There are some things that are beyond forgiveness. Finishing his book, Answered Prayers, was to be Capote's apology for his betrayal. But what he doesn't realize is that even if his intentions are kind, publishing it would just make things worse. Babe is already dead, and none of the others will forgive him anyway. By burning his copy of the manuscript, he's letting go of the idea of reconciliation, something that was holding him back from moving on. The book or your soul? It's up to you. An unfinished version of this book would be released in 1986. The writers of Feud also hint at another reason why Capote never finished this book. This goes back to a conversation in episode 1. At a dinner party, this woman explains why she'd never trust a writer. They have the last word and thus the most power. The storytellers have the last word, don't you? And I would never let a storyteller have the last word. If Capote had the last word by finishing his book, he may have the power, but that's not what he wants. He wants his friends back, but that will never happen. Thus, finishing the book is an exercise in futility. Capote would die in 1984 due to liver disease and multiple drug intoxication at the home of his longtime friend, Joanne Carson, ex-wife of TV host Johnny Carson. But the the story doesn't end there. We flash forward to 2016 where Capote's ashes are auctioned off. In the crowd is Kate Harrington, his once protege who is unsuccessful at buying the ashes, which would ultimately go to an anonymous buyer for $45,000. Now Kate is supposed to be at least 30 years older here than when we last saw her, but there was no attempt to make her appear older. At the back of the auction are the ghosts of Capote's swans, and they spend most of their time lamenting the downfall of society. I never thought so. Society would simply evaporate. What happened? Life moves on. Things change, and perhaps the show is saying something about the dangers of holding on to the past, even if those things we hold on to are grudges. Like swans, they're all dressed in white in their beautiful plumage. The final shot is of Babe looking back at Truman's ashes as the women make their way toward a white light. While Capote and Babe may not have reconciled in life, this final shot implies the deep love these two once had for each other and the potential for reconciliation in the afterlife. But now I turn it over to you. What did you think of Feud, Capote vs. the Swans? I want to hear your thoughts and theories in the comments below. Thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe, and for more bad takes you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at ThinkStoryYT. Until next time, remember, Champagne isn't drinking. It's good for the stomach.